welcome back to National Modern. I am your host, Alex Kessler, here with with a new special guest. Uh, not the scene, not the scene, not seen before on this podcast. Uh, Mike, how are you? Hello, I, I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk about a few things tonight. Yeah, we're, well, so so very quickly, why don't you introduce yourself to all of our listeners and where you come from and and et cetera, et cetera. Sure, sure. So I, I, I'm, I'm Mike, Borthos Mike. I, I live in Minneapolis here. Um, and I was uh, I was Fiber 13 on the old forums. And I, and I lived on the art forums. And I lived in the Vorthos forums. Um, and uh, my last name was difficult for someone to pronounce um, once. Like literally one time. And they're like, ah, you're that Borthos guy. I'm just going to call you Borthos Mike. And I'm like, okay, that's that, that's it. That's what we're going to do. Brand now. That's what we're going to yep. do. And then that just became a thing. So that's what I do. I, I, I've I've talked about art for many, many years. I studied art history. I worked at a museum. I worked as an art director commissioning art for uh, LCGs. Um, I've done art shows, uh, magic art shows, numerous at this point with a few more in the future. Um, a couple of years down the road, even we even have some ready. Um, so that's me. I, I sit in that art world of things. Um, I, I colloquially the curator when they curate uh things when wizards need somebody i get a call they're like we need you to do an art show or we have an art component of this thing can you do it um because partially um wizards need someone outside the walls that knows the community knows collectors credibility works with insurance understands the full gamut of things that isn't like shipping a secret layer art is very different from that you can't Mm -hmm, just have mm -hmm. one go missing that won't work so things of that sort i get contracted to do and you know done a bunch of things from that um so you know i've wrote for many years on cool stuff inc uh, formerly gathering magic formerly mana nation with good old trick Jarrett and uh, adam staborski um and i have slowed down writing at this point um just because time concerns um and more often i end up selling art and uh that's what people see me on twitter to doing and why i do that um is really to fund art shows um like everything that is uh, gained by doing so, like we figured out percentage or whatever thing with an artist, it varies. Someone has like a newborn baby, like you just don't charge them. You're just like, I'm just going to take care of this. Yeah, you have a baby. Fine. Right. Um, but if, you know, whatever, we figure those out and that just goes into a kitty. And then when we do art shows, like I have to fly to a place like five times, six times to work on a show, meet with uh, other curators, meet with logistics people. Like you, you just need to return to a place every time. And Wizards doesn't cover every one of those trips. Like, I had to fly to Milwaukee. Like, the plane goes up in the air and then down in the air. Like, you don't even get a snack. <laughs> They're just like, sit down and just don't talk. Uh, but then you have to stay in a hotel. You need per diem. You need mm-hmm. food. And that fund of selling art covers those things. So it's a self-perpetuating piece to, for me to do more art shows. And then I can invest in art shows to say, like, yep, let's get this off the ground. Get some seed funding, whatever. Uh, vision planning, whatever do we have to do. And then we go from there and that's kind of been the last few years and it's intensifying in years to come if it wasn't for the dang pandemic right right well that's that's literally today in work wise has been a conversation on like how that is just continuing but uh it, it's it's i mean and that's how you know i know you right like, I we met i think the first time was at one of the magic fest vegas which was the gp vegas at that point uh Third, what was it? Fifteen, seventeen, or nineteen? What, what, I think it was the se- it was the second one. It was the it was. I think it was the, fifteen. I think it was fifteen. It, it was it wasn't the one that was in the school gym, right? It was the right. It was the, it was the yeah. It was the, yeah, first, yeah. it was the one in the convention hall. Yeah. Right, um, right, 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 and right. you know, since then you've kind of been uh, my go to, and I think most of the internet, as you've just kind of explained, go to okay. is person who knows about magic art, <laughs> uh, and you know, kindly being the person to also remind me whenever we had preview cards, like, oh, <laughs> this is the artist that did your card. You should, you should tag them. <laughs> um, and sometimes being the person to be like, hi, we have this card. W- where can I find them on the internet? Because they, you know, their name isn't the same as their name on their card art as their Twitter right. handle, or right. they don't have a Twitter and you can stop searching, you know, just let everyone know that they were the artist and, you know, or here's their email to let them know. Um, which is, I think, how I found Izzy, who did who did the art for Kess. Um, Good old Izzy uh, Madrano, our boy. Uh, yeah. He's got he's got the dog, the the shark pig. His uh, his dog, a great dog, hangs out in a boat with him. He's a cool guy. Wait, really? I don't even know that. That's yeah, that's, no, 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 no. So Izzy lived on a boat for a while, like okay, with his dog, and his dog sure, like, sure. ate like attacked coconuts, loved biting on coconuts. The shark pig, um, and he did that. Like he would work like a concept thing, whatever, and then he'd be like on a boat for the rest of it. 
Like it was, like, it was really, that makes me really so dope, happy. Actually. Like, he's a really cool guy, and now he's working on some of the magic, like unreleased stuff that's not quite ready to yet to come out. But brilliant, super interesting dude. But no, that that happened a lot with like I can't get a hold of a person. Not not all those with public. It's like I'm gonna DM you. Do you know this person? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I used to commission them as an art director years ago. Yeah, here's their work email. Here's their personal email. If they don't respond to that, and just connect people because artists love hearing from you. It's just you know, they forget that some people are hard to get a hold of, or right, right, right. They have a stupid old Gmail or an old Hotmail account on their wet old, on their art station or on their DeviantArt, and that's what people use, and they're not checking it. Like weird right. stuff like that it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, and then and that and like that's a I mean from a content creation perspective extraordinarily valuable because there's a large library of people that make this game that are that are out there and and being able to know 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 you know how to find them. Um, so so that's going to be a big chunk of what we're talking about, uh, uh, podcast listeners. We are a modern podcast, so we're going to very briefly touch upon uh, Mike's uh, modern experience and 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 touch upon thoughts there. We're going to also talk about. Uh, the modern bannings that happened last week and specifically the fact that there were none uh, really briefly because there were none. There's not a lot to say. <laughs> um, uh, and then uh, we'll jump into stuff like Kamigawa and what's going on there right now. As this is being recorded, minimal previews have been posted. There's a few leaks um, that by the time this episode comes out, probably will be out in the world. Uh, and there's conversations about that, but not about those specific cards. Uh, but we don't we don't know what's in it. We don't know. I don't. I at this point, uh, I have no idea what's going on in the set other than um, Jinka Taxius is around, uh, and the internet is uh, more attracted to him than I would have expected. Knowing what that character is, he wears pants. <laughs> he he wears does pants. He has pants and feet. He has. There is now a feet tier if you uh, if you follow the 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 D and D minis. <laughs> Wasn't this part of the Patreon thing? We should. We yeah, 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 yeah. If you join our a and, preview of that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, uh, patrons. And if anyone wants to donate to the Patreon feed here, we will send you feet pics of uh, different Praetors <laughs> as we get access to them. Um, just for and feet, uh, that's the $150 tier. <laughs> if they're rare, they're rare. What do you want? Yeah, yeah they're, you know, it's hard to find those. We have to go through a lot of work to get to get those images for you. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, brief shout outs. First off, thank you to all our patrons, uh, for making this podcast happen and, and putting in every week to week. There are a few updates on there. Uh, so right now, um, and for, for a while, we've been releasing the early show that comes out literally the next day. Uh, that has an extra bonus anywhere from 10 minutes to 30 minutes of content. Uh, we today talked a lot about Nintendo and then personal art stories, uh, so if you want to check that out, uh, it's available for five dollar tier and above. It, it is available at the two dollar tier, but all the two dollar tiers are sold out. Um, so now it's five dollar tiers and above. Because of that, uh, we have offered a new thing to the five dollar tier, though, which is you get the edited episode, the version of this that's in video form uh, posted on Patreon a day early. So so the episode comes out on Tuesdays. You can get access to that video with all of the editing goodness and all of the work that Rick and Marshall put into making us look pretty. Uh, and you can see card art uh, a day early on Monday. So so now at $5, you get both of those. Plus, there's a bunch of other stuff. If you check out Patreon, you get access to. Uh, so that's brand new. That, those are all updates there. And then uh, second, uh, thank you, TCG Player. If you're going to be buying anything from TCG Player, we have an affiliate code uh, below. If you just click on it before you do the buying part of that experience, we they they help us out and we we greatly appreciate it. Um, all right. Now, let's talk. Let's talk about your your modern experience. You're you've you've dabbled. You've played some some modern. I played in the a past. lot of modern, man. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I played it from the start of when they introduced the thing and I started in Zoo because obviously you had to play Zoo like mm-hmm, one mm-hmm. drop three, three in green. Yeah, you know, I'm playing that. Easy. Yeah, well, hey, it's it's uh and really, you, the deck, it sounds like you evolved to uh, or completed to. I did. Uh, I completed. I completed. Uh, you, you jumped <laughs> ahead of me there, and I appreciate that. No, you, you go from <laughs> zoo, and it was too slow. That was the thing, right? Like, I, I was a sprinter. I did track and field. The, the, the speed aspect is what I wanted. I uh, like that. How feel. are you going to eat and or talk to friends or meet artists between rounds if your deck takes too long to play? You're 100% you buying to play eggs? Mm-mm. I ain't got time right. for that. I got time for that. I got business. I got business to do. I got, I got things. So no, I played Infect and I, and I enjoyed Infect because it was the closest thing to like a thematic feel. Right. I'm Vorthos, Mike. Like I'm all about that flavor. It's the best mm-hmm. part of the meal. It's the taste. So I want like 
my deck to feel that. And in fact, it was all about the fear of going off at any mm-hmm. moment. They could hit, boom, eight poison counters, you're dead. And that worry of, did I counter the right thing? Yeah, it, do, it, Am I not seeing an angle? Whatever those things are. I really enjoyed as a player because of that less of a mind game and more of like, this felt Phyrexian. It felt almost I inevitable mean, if there's a misstep. It, it, in fact, the mechanic is like famous for possibly never returning again in real numbers because it like the goal for it was to make people uncomfortable because it is supposed right. to be the Phyrexian spreading right. over Mirrodin and, and Mark Rosewater right. designed it to feel something that is and then the design team under him designed it to feel invasive with the fact that you can't remove it, whatever. And famously, they did too good of a job. <laughs> they did. They really like, did. It, it is a, a a mechanic that people love, but also people hate having been done to them. And so, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. So I played that for years and years and years, and I had art original art from that deck even um and you know the the deck's been nerfed a bunch of times and and you had to do iterations and you know i i wanted to get some sort of thing that new i tried to make red green in fact work because turns out blood rush is really hard to deal with like it's sure. really hard to deal with because you can't cover so like i wanted to find something of that end and i knew black would be the thing eventually but there weren't enough pieces yet and finally you know we see the black Right, right now. That, actually, that now that work, yeah. Because um, turns out that Crusader's real good. No, but finding those like pieces early because we were still investigating how it worked of like how much math would be necessary to you know count to ten. Um, you know, scale up came got real, and you're like, wow, this thing is just out of control. This is vintage playable, and it was. It won a vintage tournament for Grapes. Mm-hmm. Um, but with recent bannings, when they made playing it engineer, then it's like I don't know if this can work as much uh, and from there you know my friend group locally uh we play a lot of uh cube versus commander mm-hmm. and so in minneapolis we have like six cubes and like three or four powered cubes so when we do get together a bunch of known associates saturday morning at lodestone games and comics getting coffees there we do rotisserie cube because you can't do that at your house you can't do that in arena you can't do that one-on-one car you just can't but that experiential piece where it's not about the magic, it's about the gathering changed from me going modern to I'm not going to play Friday night magic. Cause we get Saturday morning cute, baby. I'm doing sure. That. Sure. Sure. Well, and, and like, it's interesting now in today's world where tournament magic for modern kind of went away at the same time that in fact really took its biggest hit for a moment. Cause like, I think what's interesting about Infect as a deck in general is, yeah, there were some nerfs, right? Like Gitaxi Probe yeah. getting banned definitely yeah, hurt. Yeah. But more, more what affected it was the medic, like cards being printed that were bad for it, right? Like Fatal right. Push specifically to me is the main reason Infect never couldn't, 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 couldn't come back, right? Because like you could beat Path, you could beat Lightning Bolt because of, because of, um, Crusader. Well, I mean, you could do like Crusader or you could do any sort of protection spell like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And and, and Lightning Bolt's always like relatively easy to fight because any pump spell also stops it. And and Path like does give, you know, they're they're relatively weaker to the deck. But Fatal Push was this huge problem. And that added the fact that you no longer have Gitaxian Probe. And like, as you said, Plague Engineer, you know, sideboard cards just got better at fighting against those types of threats. The metagame became really resilient to it. But then Modern Horizons 2 happened. <laughs> and, exactly right. and now you live in a world where the removal spells in white and red are the two most played. They're just better than Fatal Flush. Fatal Flush is no longer in the format. And really, Path to Exile is no longer in the format. And you're looking at Prismatic Ending, which is a sorcery speed white removal spell. Mm-hmm. And you're looking at the one mana red can't do six if you have delirium. Oh, right, <laughs> it's right, showing right, up right, on right, screen right, right, in right, front right, of us. Right, 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 uh, right. Those two are six, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those are the two real and lightning bolts still, right? Are are like the real premier things. And those are all great for infective pay gets. Two of those, in fact, like laughs in the face of both of the red spells, like you can pump your way out of it or uh have the production spells to protect against. And then you add the fact that Phyrexian Crusader is a card that literally bricks the most played format in the removal and you just die to it <laughs> and wins yeah. every creature combat it could ever get into. Plus it has all the other ones. You still have the fact that you have a land that flies that has infect and you still have a one, one evasive creature with uh, uh, the black one, not the blue one. Um, 
Yeah, it's got it's it's, it's one one flying. Like, like yeah, yeah, like, one one flying for two, right? Instead of yeah. one one unblockable, but like in modern at this point, it's not like lingering and like the, you know, lingering souls is no longer a playable card. No, so no, like, no. uh, you're you're way more benefited than you used to be in the format, and like, there's bad matchups, right? And but it also like kind of laughs in the face of stuff like Luris. Let's say it's faster. It's just way too fast for it. Right. I mean, it's literally like half a turn you miss a Loris thing where you're like, ah, I chose the wrong permanent or whatever. And in fact, will immediately kill you. And that's the pieces that I, I've I found that when I started playing modern, I picked up every counter possible. Right? Like I have like a, a, a straight up like a fat pack box, because I only play two fat pack boxes. I got new Phyrexia fat pack boxes or Dark Ascension, because I worked on those sets. I did names and flavor text for those. So I only use those two. And one whole thing is just infect. So it has like second guess. It has divert. It has uh, uh, merchant scroll. It has every variation of infect from modern to legacy to vintage. And I keep it in one thing because of I can alter it to metagame shifts. And when I see new cards that pop up, I just add all. I just got to add a playset. And it just becomes an evergreen deck. It's just my play group doesn't play it. But were I to ever have a modern tournament, I could just sleep up. Just bang, bang, good go. Because there's really not a whole lot of new things in that deck that is quite expensive to change over. Sure, 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 sure. And and it, it is a toolbox deck where you're like, oh, what's the metagame right? I mean, like, I have the same thing with blue-white, right? Where I have a, like, just every blue-white control card in a big pile of 200 cards. And when I have to, like, figure out a deck, I'm like, okay, what's sideboard? What's, like, <laughs> what's who's in 60 the, who's cards? Who's in my room with me that I can yeah, see? Like, yeah. ah, that kid only plays mono green stomp stomp. Like, you right. can easily, like, figure out what you got to play just, like, before For that night, the... yeah. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah. So I, I feel that, and, and I want to continue always having that that deck i mean i still have like i have a paradox vintage deck because i have the color study to to paradox like i have it from nils so i have that deck to play vintage but i want to have two because i want to look at it like 30 years from now modern will probably still be around and have different variations but in fact probably we'll have a through line for it because it's so ubiquitous powerful and vintage will have that too so i want to have the double options for life and 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 that i think that's important I think that's important whenever having having modern like I, I I'm the same way I have I have blue white control variants and sometimes it's just guys right now it's an Esper Stone Blade list right. whatever right. and I have Jun decks always and I've had other ones that I've like started carrying around with me like I've had Tron I've had Merfolk I've had whatever but for whatever reason Jund and blue white control have always survived because they have the best they fight against each other the most fun. Like they're both like we have a lot of interaction and we have a lot of threats and you have to go back and forth and answer them. And I've never had a game where playing them against together. If I hand it to a friend, like, let's go. But that wasn't fun. And right, it wasn't a blow right away. Right, right. And like, you know, and, and some, sometimes different decks are favored. Like Jund was worse for a while because like Fatal Push rained on Raging Ravine's day. And then sometimes Blue White was better because it wasn't playing Fatal Push and Raging Ravine like just got around every piece of removal and they could outvalue Blue White. And like it's always been this really cool. I, I like I love the idea when a modern player like of, of being a modern player and having two decks that are like built to play well against each other. That's a good idea. That's that's, that's a good like meta like really like high level to hit of like do you want to be a modern always relevant? Build two decks and then fill out every variant. Both of those and you'll always have something to play. Right, right. You're like you don't have to play in tournaments. You want to just play modern. These are fun yeah. decks. Play with someone. It's why I don't like Tron necessarily because Tron is like there are a few decks out there that are like and actually I think Infect's actually a good one for doing this with because Infect has a lot of really different variables that you can play and play differently and you can like have done differently that last time to play towards the problem with Tron classically for doing this with is like it does one thing if it does that thing against a deck that will lose to that thing you lose if it does that thing against a deck that will win against that thing they lose Every time. <laughs> like, like, Infect like, versus Tron, I, I've never lost to Tron before. Right. I just, you just, it's faster. You you're just like, it's, I, a, you it's, a, it's a buy. And John yeah, can't buy. beat. It's always buy. Yeah. John, John can't beat. Like, John can beat Tron if it draws all four of the sideboard cards it beat and, like, got lucky and turn one to X into turn two Tarmogoyf into right. turn, like, sure. three value it, engine. It's possible, but yeah, it's hard. Right, right. Like, but, like. It's not a that game isn't fun either because when Tron loses, it's not fun to play because it's just like, oh, they didn't. I just attacked them and they died. <laughs> yeah, that's that, yeah, they didn't draw the right piece or whatever. So, yeah, it's it's versus versus other ones. But I, yeah, I think I think that's a really cool idea. 
All right, let's talk about some art. I think it's art time. Unless you have anything else you want to say about Infect. I, As an I, Infect I, player, what's your worst, least favorite card to, to see across the table from you? That across the table from me? Yeah. Uh, any, any taxing effects. Okay. Like Athalia? Yeah. A- anything of that sort. Um, um, like anything death and taxes, even, even if it's like, I know I can beat this deck, whatever. I just, I just detest playing. Just because just how I have to think the extra math is just irritating. To be like, oh, I gotta pay one extra. It's like playing the Ristic Study in Commander. I'm like, just, just stop it. I'm not gonna pay it. Leave me alone. Like, right, 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 that, right. that piece I really, really don't love that matchup. But every other matchup is, you know, enjoyable because there might be nuance of it. But that just com- makes my deck more complex. It's like the early decks that made you shuffle a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Like it feels like that. Where I'm like, this is just unnecessary uh, to you're, me. But- you're making me do more math. How how dare you? <laughs> I count to this. I count to ten. No more. No more. I, not eleven. Ten. <laughs> I have chosen a deck that removed ten numbers from the numbers I had to count to, and you're you're bringing it back. How mm. how dare? All right. I'm here. So, I'm here to talk art. Let's talk art. Yeah. What let's you talk hear? art. All right. So uh, let's let's let's. Uh, so this this is the relevant to Kamigawa because we're in the middle of preview season. Sure. Um, we don't know anything, or I don't know anything about specifics on it but we do know so so and and this was one of the questions you kind of wanted to talk about there were leaks right and every preview season there's some amount of leaks some are significantly worse than others famously speaking of infect all of new phyrexia leaked like a month early before it came out um and that happens on occasion this one significantly less i think the the front and the back of the boxes for the two commander sets got got revealed because someone at some store opened their box early or got it shipped earlier than they should have um and i think uh, uh, Jing, the Jinkataxius card. There's a card out there. We don't. It's not confirmed if it's real or not. And 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 we're not going to talk about those cards. Are if they've been previewed, this is what they were. Yeah. Uh, if Marshall didn't just put their card art and the cards in front of us, then we don't know what they are yet. <laughs> um, but uh, you kind of wanted to talk about a little bit on like how does you know, these type of leaks affect artists. Cause like, uh, I think that, and we'll get a little bit of like what preview season is like for artists in general too, but uh, specifically in let's start there. Uh, sure. So y- you would assume that artists have a full schedule, right? Like we see which content creators on which day, right? You see the web page, like these are the content creators on the day. And then you're like, ah, is it going to be on Twitter? Is it going to be an article, video? What's going on? You don't really know. But you know what's on this day. Artists don't get that. Like that isn't something that they all get to be like, mine is on this day. Ryan Pankos is on this day. Like they don't get that. Only until recently have art directors really given them like a heads up. Oh, by mm-hmm. the way, your thing is going to come out on the 27th um, or pay attention to this and this thing, or you should watch this thing when this video drops, you know, the round table with Zach Stella and the crew, which is phenomenal. And they need to do that a thousand times more because it was incredibly good. Very, very good. Like they didn't get that in years past. Like when a, someone would reach out to them to be like, Hey, I know you make paintings. Can I buy your painting? They'd be like, pardon what? Uh, what thing? <laughs> what do you mean? And you have to like, you have to like send them like, and then someone like, here's the mythic, mythic spoiler dot com, and they're like, I no, like, who previewed this? Right, and they're right, like, right. well, it, it was spoiled, and they're like, was it spoiled, previewed, or leaked? And people didn't differentiate, <laughs> right? They're like, right. well, it's out, it's a spoiler. It's like, no, 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 spoiler is the colloquial term. Was it leaked or official? And artists need to know that. So they would generally go quiet because they're just like, I don't know if I can comment on this or not right. or what the deal is. And by doing so, often if you, you know, ha- you may have a painting, you have a sketch, you know, you got to eat, you know, got you can't just have craft mac, craft mac and cheese craft dinner. You're not Canadian all the time. You need to find when the painting is out, the card is out. That's the best time to sell the thing. Right, sure. like, duh! It's relevant. It's hot. It's brand new. Clearly, right? Especially like, if like it's something the two like, times are like if it breaks a format, and the moment it's previewed and people are correct. hyped about it. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Like you don't wait six months after and being like, "I'm gonna move it now," and they're like, "Well, is it good? Is it not?" Right. And some of those things artists have tried to time, where it's like, "I know this common was played in Future Future League." Because I was the concept artist on a future set and I heard people talking about it and they told me about it. That is so rare though. Instead, it is literally 95% of the time, you generally know. You generally know. Like you got a dragon, you got to sell that dragon. But when there's a leak, it's this weird in between when they're like, 
I can show the art because it was in a Mothership article, but there's no card, but the card leak is out. So do I wait until it's officially previewed or do I sell it knowing that, you know, my, my time in the sun, my 15 minutes, Andy Warhol's famous quote of fame is right now. And I have to do that. And that internal stress often just has them be like, I'm just going to wait. And then, you know, then it's like, oh, you're one dragon. Now it becomes, there's five dragons now and you're competing against all of them. So that sort of piece is an area where um, someone like me who works on like art shows, I have to be under NDA because, you know, art shows in the future, museums can't turn in a month. Like they got to plan out. So you do need some info about the future to be like, all right, let's try to figure out something that's current to be in the show at the right time. You know, makes sense, right? So I have to talk to artists and talk to someone at Wizards about this to say, like, can we time this? You know, is it a thing we can discuss? Is it not? Do we have to wait? And that dialogue with an artist I get to have, but even them, they don't get that full schedule. And especially when things change in real time, like, oh, this preview went to the wrong person. It's got this one. You have a new one now. You think an artist got a hold of that info? No, they're right, going to get right, emailed. Right. Unless, unless a content creator reaches out to them and says, hey, I have your preview card. Can you give me a quote? Can you get, give, give me some background info? And they're always delighted to tell you things. Tyler Walpole always posted on Twitter where he's like, hey, if you got my stuff, let me know. I want to talk about it. Let, right, let me right. come on your cast. Let's do it. Um, but for people that don't know that, it's it just they find out randomly from like random people messaging them when it happens or an art director like Zach Sell has been really nice and said, it's going to come out on this day. I don't know the exact hour. I think it's going to be around here. Um, or this person will be previewing it. Um, FYI, reach um, out to them getting, or yeah, reach out to them or they may be more often is they may reach out to you. Um, don't be, Oh, you know, don't be surprised if that happens, but those things are directly impacting like artists, like livelihood straight up, like mm -hmm. leaks are, literally impacts Crazy them because they have yeah. to be quiet until that happens and then they lose their hype and that that loses sales which loses you know craft mac and cheese dinner for them right and that is a very real ramification for them. and i guess i guess that that kind of leads to my next question which is how does that work like how does what does the art market look like if i were a magic player and sure. i uh have played magic you know for a long time uh yeah. and decided i want to buy magic cards wow <laughs> or not magic arts, uh, magic art. How, like, what does that look like? Where, where are these artists posting that? How can we help, you know, get out of this Mac and cheese dinner? <laughs> sure. Sure. No, it's it, the, the first thing that I always encourage is that um, you look at what you have, right? You should be looking at what cards have a memory to you, right? Like I did a villainous wealth, had this one time it went off i won this commander game out of left field i wasn't supposed to right like that is a core memory to you right that card isn't like a planeswalker dragon that everybody wants right like everybody will want a nickel bolus right no there's mm -hmm. a nickel bolus hashtag for Christ's sake. like the pieces that have meaningful things to you that are just these weird obscure things often if they're in decks they get reprinted and they get new art periodically right especially if they're staples they get periodically reprinted so I would say try to like internally figure out what do you want? I want an elf. I play elf tribal all day. My name is Brian. I live live in Georgia. Like I'm all elf all the time, right? Clearly, dude needs an elf, obviously. But which thing then you have to do a survey to see what do you, what do you actually want? Because instead of like, I want Lana Ware elves, it's like, yeah, that's been sold a really long time. Like the painting, original painting of Lana Ware elves is long gone, clearly. But that process of what do you want is the first step. Second step is you ask people, you can ask an artist. They usually are very responsive and very friendly, especially when you're like, Hey, I love your jam. Can I, can I get your stuff? And they'll be like, yes, uh, no, I'm a digital person. Sorry. Or I have a print store. Consider this and maybe get one. And then, you know, you can purchase it and have a great time. But that piece of, you can reach out to an artist and if you can't, don't, uh, and if, you know, reaching out to an artist hasn't worked or you, you want to have a wider experience. There's a pretty big Facebook group that, yes, it's on Facebook, I'm aware, um, called the MTG Art Market. Uh, I'm an admin there, and it's, uh, you know, we have you know over 10,000 people, and it's kind of the place to buy art. Uh, when there's new art that comes out, it's there. Like, straight up, when you see a preview, within a day, it's going to be on the market. Almost always, without failure. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit of a delay, but usually it's like within a day, it's up there. And 
the speed of it is is unlike any other brand. Like there's a new Warhammer book. If there's a new Star Wars thing, like even if it's like a Hearthstone, whatever, no one is asking them within minutes, is this for sale? That does not exist in any other brand. Magic alone has that, period. Like I've I've been in other brands. No one has that other than magic. And artists are always surprised when they're in like secret layer to be like, I've already had three messages ask me to buy this. And it's been like minutes. Why right, is that right. happening? Why is that happening for those, Mike? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's magic players. They're very quick. Like we are accustomed to this CCG aspect of the preview season and paying attention and and uh, the aspects of it being heightened and, and and sped up. No comparable exists for that. Like that is an unknown concept entirely. So when people do see something that's like, I would see that new monkey. I want that new monkey. It's got dash. I think it's good. You have to be literally minutes. You can't mm-hmm. wait a day. Can't message them and then they be like, ah, this is what I think I'm going to do. And I'm probably going to auction it in the next couple of days. Take a look at this place. This is where I'll do it. But you have to be that quick. But in order to be that, you need to take stock in what you want. I'm right. a commander you either, player. Either you could spend money on infinite things, but not sure. get things you actually want. Or you can prior- like know what your priorities are. And then during preview season... You know, and 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 we'll have links to the Facebook group yeah, in sure, the description sure. of this episode, sure. uh, so you can click below to join. Uh, but the you know, be on the Facebook groups during this preview season, and when you see a card you like, you know, j- like jump on quickly and see if it's it's posted. And like, you there's ways, right yeah, yeah th- and there's ways to like your point earlier. Not every piece of artwork, especially nowadays, is done with physical copies versus digital. For instance, Cass is not not uh, it was a digital artwork, and I have a print of it. But yeah, like, you know, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a physical painting, uh, but there's, when there aren't physical, you have the option of print often, especially with cards that are more popular. And then, and then that there's, there's a library of different ways to kind of jump on board. But that wrinkle is where you, that's when it gets complicated, guys, where it's like, I can't get the painting. It's digital final. Okay. I can't get one. Hold up. What if I told you there's other options? Dun, dun, dun. So for example, Say you're a commander player. So one thing is, you know, I, I have a couple commander decks and I and I really particular on which art piece I want, right? Like each one, like I want this artist, not that artist. Because we had beers one time at Spectrum Live and, you know, we missed an award ceremony and we got beers instead. That was Wayne Reynolds and me. So you know, Wayne's my boy. So obviously I'm going to get Wayne art when I can get a Wayne art option. Well, one piece is, um, say you're playing commander, model color, you got five mana open and you need to figure out a way to draw cards off other people's card draws. What are you going to play? There's only one artifact that's going to get you a card all the time, and they got to pay one, and they're not going to do it, right? Problem is, Carl Kopinski, our boy, made the final digital. So when people ask, hey, I want to buy this, he's like, oh, it's a digital. They're like, oh, okay. And then the conversation stops. However, smart people will then ask, hey, Carl, do you have a pencil sketch? And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I did a pencil, and then I scanned it, and then I finished it digitally. But no one asked him about that. So that is where the wrinkle comes in of asking an artist and then checking the art market. This never made it online. And I'm like, well, I kind of have like a pencil like wall in my house where I like kind of have in like early works. And uh, it was just an email to say, hey, Carl, I I know this is a digital final. That's aware. Do you have a pencil sketch? Do you have a color study? Do you have anything else? Do you have anything on a napkin that you made that had an idea? And then you, you kept that. And sometimes the answer is yes. And that's showing two things. I This painting sold. It's kind of an important land in Commander. A lot of people play it. And I saw the original sold. I'm like, ooh, that's really expensive. Um, but then I'm like, oh, maybe he's got other stuff. And I called him up and he's like, oh, yeah, I've got a color study. Would you be interested? And I'm like, heck, yeah. Wasn't that expensive either. So those sort of pieces that are not thousands of dollars, I'm sure, it might be a couple hundred bucks. Might be a little more than that. But... Maybe you do a payment plan. Maybe you pay half now and half in a month. Maybe you sell a couple cards to get some. Like that's the piece where it gets complicated, but you have to know what you want. Mm-hmm. And then you really seek out that thing. And that's the piece of where like someone reaches out to me on Twitter and like, hey, I'm looking into getting this and this. You got any advice in that or people? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I hear this, 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 this. I've heard of this, this, this. You should ask them about this, this, this. But if they say this, ask them about if they have anything else. And they often sure. do. And especially for those that's in like a drawer in their house and they're like, oh, sure, I'll sell that. I'd love to get fancy cheese for a month. Sounds awesome. Right, right, right. And well, and I think I think that's something that people don't even really realize is that like 
even with digital art, but all versions of art creation, it is not a, I thought of a thing and now it exists in this other thing. It's like, there's a huge process of sketching and first tries. And you see this all the time. Even just like, if you looked at the modern horizons two sketch cards, they look yeah. different than the actual cards. Cause every oh. single one went through iterations and then wizards gives you notes and like, Oh, sorry, we told you hamster and it's actually a gerbil. So you have to like change these specific features. Otherwise every hamster science magic player is going to yell at us about us not knowing what a gerbil is well, and they will too. They will. oh they, they will <laughs> uh <laughs> they absolutely will so there is all of these iterations that exist that could be out there and could be available and and, yeah, and they're not going to throw them away they just keep right. them in a stack in their office until somebody asks about them and they don't even bring them to a show because they're like well that's not the final piece i don't know if people are going to want that or not and then People find out about it and they get really excited about it because it's you know not super expensive, pretty right. cheap usually. And then people could be like, "Oh, I got an original piece," and then you maybe you could frame it with a card. Off you go. You have your own commander. Everybody's having a great time. Yep, 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 yep. That's super. That's super helpful. Uh, so, so art's out there now. That's that's going kind of directly to the artist now in the art market. I've known this for sure. I've yeah, you know, I've seen it happen. Then there comes the process of people reselling. Sure. What does that generally look like? Uh, it, it depends on the piece, of course, mm -hmm. right? Like if you have an alpha art sitting in your uncle's basement and he wants to help selling it because he knows, you know, his nephew's a, a famous podcaster, modern aficionado, right? That's a different discussion. Uh, versus you have a piece and you want to resell it um, for reasons, right? There's always a hundred reasons. Right, right, uh, right. The, big, the biggest thing about that is that there has to be a time elapsed, right? Like you can't pick up a piece or pick something up quietly and then flip it if you will especially if it's public because people are like well this was just on sale how could this appreciate it so quick like mm -hmm. you just bought this and it gonna work but there are some things that can help that like any good marketing you know placement promotion uh uh, uh placement promotion price and product um that you have to go into consideration you know you can't just post an auction you need to pre-promote it you need to let people know what's coming and then you need to take good photos of it. Otherwise, you know, you have potato pics and it ain't going to work. What is this? Reddit? Like, hey, mm -mm, people aren't going to want that. But all of those things you have to assume that people know how to do. And you'd be amazed how many people are just not very good at that. It's like Facebook Marketplace sometimes. And having all your ducks in a row is hard for someone to only do once. Like to have like, okay, this is the norms. This is what people expect. You can't just have anything blurry. You can't just be a mile away. Like all the things that you can see, often people ask for help on. And mm -hmm. that's where there's, you know, people in the community, there's there, there's art brokers, art agents, art dealers, you, whatever. People post hi in the Facebook group. I have this piece and I would like help selling it. Can yeah, someone totally. help me? Yeah. How much is this? I don't know how I might want to move it. I might not. And whenever people do that, they always want to move it. Like, let's be real. Um, but that sort of thing people are always willing to like lend a hand and give advice mm -hmm. on those sort of things. Um, but the biggest thing is that if it's something high enough profile um, and it's not new, right? Like it's not like it's been around for a little bit or, you know, it's a popular commander or whatever. There's really never a rush for it because you mm -hmm. know, there's demand for those sort of things, especially like legendaries that are commanders that people play because you know, there's going to be three or four people that are like, Oh man, that's my jam. I need that. Um, but you just need to give them ample time to be aware of it so that there is enough interest and how much that time that is that varies on obviously what the art is. Right. And, and, and like, to some extent that also, like, if you are trying to find the right buyer for a piece that loves it the most to find the perfect home for a piece of art, that person might be able to afford it, but it, you know, cash doesn't just envelop in every person's hands. It might yeah. take them you know, some amount of time to be like, oh, you know, if I give a given a month, I could figure out how to put together this amount of money a lot more easily than if I'm giving 24 hours. Right. And, yeah, you, and you'd be amazed how many artists do that, too. Like, like you, you buy a piece or you inquire about a piece and they're like, I need six months. Is that cool? And our artist is like, wait, you love the thing. And you're probably going to be taking pictures about this and asking me about it every couple while. And you love this. Of course, I'm going to make this easy for you. Like sure. every time without question, people are super cool about that because the, the passionate part of it shows through like I'm an elf collector. I want to get this elf. You got an elf. Let, let's do it. Let's right, do it right. live. 
they're going to move mountains to do that for you. Um, Cause the chance of also you reselling it is also low because you love it, you know, and that builds that patronage and builds that relationship with the artist. And and how do artists generally feel about kind of, I guess it, it, since it's relevant to, it, to reselling in general, is that something they're normally not a fan of or. It's part of the business, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you can't really be like, I'm angry about this. It was cheap when I sold it and it's now high. It's like, well, you're also very lucky that things did appreciate for how many like 90 CCGs that just died on the vine. And some of those are just worth nothing. Literally, there's no interest, no demand, nothing at all. Magic's been lucky in that sense. And, it, and it's part of part of just art. As soon as it leaves your house, there is a, a, a detachment that you have to have. Of, mm -hmm. Yep. Someone else's business now. It's out in the world. That's OK. I can't control that. Um, there's still a couple of artists that get really salty about it whenever things get resold, but there's only like a handful. There's maybe like three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About it. Most of the other ones are like, yeah, it's part of the business. I'm making new art all the time. Whatever. It's going to happen. And and like theoretically on two sides of the same coin, they still have the ability to sell prints depending on what deals course, they made of course, their ability of to course. sell, you know, yeah. what, what their art, art ownership yeah. is and, and totally. be, which I guess th this is a three sided coin B when that art sells for that much money, the ability for them to sell prints theoretically it has more value attached to it because you have proof yep. like, Oh, you couldn't buy that thing for 50 grand, but you could buy this thing for now $500 versus $100 or whatever. You know, I'm not, I'm there making up every dollar amount that I just no, made no, up. No, but you're right, you're right on that. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it pulls it upward. Yeah, it does. Right. Uh, that's a normal thing. And theoretically that should apply to other artwork that artists did. If they've done a lot of magic card art that is on other relevant cards, right? Like the, yep. the, um, Mark, the Mark pools of the world or the, 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 you know, when I've like, Oh, I have four iconic pieces of artwork. My one iconic piece of artwork just sold for X, Buka I, bucks, whatever. Yeah. yeah I've been holding should. on to one of the other ones. I just never got rid of. I've had like this bird of paradise in my pocket for the last 20 years. Uh, and Oh, I put it on and Oh, it sold for more. Cause it's actually, yeah. you know, birds of paradise is way better than howling mine or whatever. <laughs> yeah, got kids tuition money at that point. No, that, right, that does right. happen. That, that, you hit a plateau, you you jump to the next plateau, and when you let they do those level up times, it does help the future of your career. Um, a good example is like a Ryan Pankos. He went from like good to having a couple breakthrough pieces to being like, oh, he's Ryan Pankos. Sure, like, sure. You know, you get to that next level, and it's just like I have no paintings for sale because I sell them immediately, and none of them are available, and they're always hot. So like that becomes like people like, have talked oh. to me and they've like bought out my next one, regardless yeah. of what it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, uh, those are the ones you have to be careful with. That does happen okay. uh, to some artists less so these days because, you know, our, uh, artists don't get informed of what new cards are. Sure. So, sure. So when you get a, a card commission, if it's a new set, you, the card's changing in with development right. in real time, right? They don't know exactly how strong Oak goes plus one versus plus two or whatever is. Whereas a reprinted card, double masters or whatever, they know what the card is, right? That changes the perception of how hard they go. And they, they, they know if it's a rare or like a legendary, cause you know, know what a legendary yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. Or like it's a dragon. But if it's in between those, they can't really know. So selling early could actually undermine them depending on the card. Sure. Piece. And that's become a more common thing as late as like, I, I can't get into exclusive rights or anything of that sort because it's hockey stick. Yeah, yeah, stick. yeah. Like, like if, if this is the next Ragavan, anything I gave you as a price is not relevant to what Nowhere that conversation near. is. Nowhere and near. or it's the next like, you know, I guess I, I don't have a good random. Anything D&D. &D. Yeah, anything yeah. D &D. Oh, sure. Like yeah. at this point, like would be the same situation. Yeah. So like the Baldur's Gate stuff, you wouldn't sell it really. Yeah, 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 and and because it could it could go anywhere, and yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, so so who are some of the like white whale art pieces that you would love to see get sold at some point? The white whale pieces, like uh, like like it, like pieces that you know exist that someone's been holding on to forever and just have never kind of gone out into the world, or you know the the it's the goats. What are the goats? <laughs> the, the goats, right? The, you know, the, it's the greatest of all time works, right? There's like five to ten works that people, people being, you know, people in the know, collectors, artists, whatever, that often they might change their order of what they are. You know, is Pet Sounds number one uh, from the Beach Boys? Here's number three, whatever. Regardless, sure. it's top ten, right? Who cares? Those pieces do not move very often. They, they just don't. 
cartographer is one of them, Donato Gincola. It was a Latina woman, way too strong of com- composition and creation um, before he needed to do it. Way before any of that, that kind of made a new standard. That card, um, Surgical Extraction by Steve Bellet, and he still has it because he loves it. It's a not for sale mm-hmm. work. And he's is that the, the promo version or the classic version? Classic baby, all okay, day, yeah, yeah, all day with the moon, Ooh, yeah, yeah, and the, like the spine spooky. coming in the middle. Like that piece is sci-fi cover, exceptional quality, right? In a, a, a work that you know at the time everyone's like, oh, I think that's okay, but now that card's like, oh, that card's amazing, and then that art is amazing. Those pieces, um, things like. Uh, the guy with the bananas. Uh, what's that card, card called? Um, the, the legendary uh, Tassiger. Tassiger. Yes. So Tassiger's by Chris Ron is one of the best lit pieces ever. He isn't actually shadow, but he's clear and it's sure. visible. It is incredibly difficult. And the composition is really strong. The musculature is really strong. Those sort of works, people own them. Those do not move. They mm-hmm. do not move. Those are the works that it's, eventually... It's great it's a top tier commander. It's a modern staple. It's a Correct. iconic character from the story. And he's a meme. <laughs> it, it has all, of, <laughs> like the all of the things. Yeah. It has all the things. Those are the pieces that eventually, when a museum starts collecting works, which there's two that are going to be again doing this, um, those are the pieces that you want in a museum. Those are the pieces you want preserved for life because they could put them out at any time. And then there's story behind them. There's a didactic that's like, all right, here's just the meme didactic. Here's one on the card playability and why it's relevant. Here's the technical quality one and why it shows this illustration now gets elevated into the fine art term, imaginative realism, which this is what this art is called. It's not fantasy sci-fi. It's imaginative realism because realism is a type of art. Imaginative gets the the hyper-specific art term for it. And those are the pieces that I want people to see when you see them up close, it, it's magical. You're, mm-hmm. you, you know, you get transported like a child. You know, you're 12 years old. You're going to your first art museum. And at that art museum, you see one piece that you're like, man, that thing's really cool. That's a really cool thing. I remember that for life because I was a little kid and I thought that was really new. Uh, I, everyone, I got told not to touch anything, to stop talking. But I saw an artwork that made me feel. Mm-hmm. And those works, when you see them without context, without a card, and it's big, you get that feel and that connection from it and those are those couple works are the ones that eventually i want to see again i just want to see up close myself sure. um but well there's there's like yeah. a there's a, a level of like age not agelessness but like there's history behind them right you like see it in the artwork itself where it's like oh there is more to sill that not Silongar. <laughs> there's Tassiger, more, there's Tassiger, more Tassiger, to Tassiger. it's like the yeah. same letters too uh there's yeah, more to Tassiger. 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 um not just like in story or in artwork conversation, but the stories that I've told as a magic player and me playing, you know, I've, I, you know, not only do I relate to this artwork from all the perspectives of its relevance to the, to the, the, the story of the game or what it means as a character, but I also, as a character in my life have played tournaments with, you know, him and my decks and won them or a lost them because I, I messed it up or, or I've, you know, been tuning my CDH or high competitive or casual version of my Tassiger list since I'm going to say 2014 and Ooh, I'm going to be wrong on when yeah, that sh- yeah, set yeah, came out enough. 2016. Math. It's like the first three year of this podcast. Uh, Math. and you know, and, and not to mention like, and then add the layer of like delve is also one of the most broken mechanics of all time. So like, I mean, there's, you're, there's, not wrong. you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, so there's just layers to it. Yeah. I, I, that makes sense to me. And that, and it's interesting that that is one of the, like, because I think if I was like go to the world of magic players and was like, what are the what are the artworks uh, that that are like what, the goats, or whatever? What what are the things people would think are, are, are hard to come by? And like, you know, I think a lot of people would point to Black Lotus and sure. Lana War Elf, you said, or the original Lightning Bolt Jusim or, Jin. you know, Juzum Jin, like the stuff from the 90s. And then and then I think there's maybe some stuff as time goes on, that's like more iconic than not. But uh, some of the newer stuff, a is digital. That's so iconic. And B, then you get into more of the talent of the artist and the skin and, and what, where, where you right. ended up with and what, what it ended up being. And that that's all really interesting. They have more time with nostalgia until you, until people realize it's five inches by seven inches. Right. 
Like, you don't realize how small alpha art is. Like, it's this big. It's Cause it this didn't, it, big. Because when they made alpha art, it was, hey, a we're a small company. Can yeah. you just draw some art totally. for us, art students? Totally. Because we need it, and we'll just duct tape it into this game. <laughs> As yeah, a person it's... who just came out with the game with artwork in it, uh, you will cheat and steal to figure out You do your best. You do, the, you do the best with what you have, yeah. and it's a product of its time, and that's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah, just... Yeah. When you encounter it, it, the experience you expect, I'm telling you, it, telling people, it's not what you think it is. Because mm-hmm. you expect to be driven and pulled into it. It's just, it's this big. It, mm-hmm. it, it, you have to be right in front of it just to see layers the, the of details like, of it. The quality of that artwork or the, the, the men is almost, it's more just being in rooms with it and knowing yeah. what it is than, a pre, than the artwork, right? It's, it's more of a, like, it's the declaration of independence. Correct. Looking at the declaration of independence is boring. It's a bunch it's of, paper. it's a bunch of handwriting on paper, but it's what it is. It is accomplished right. the things that it's accomplished. And that right. is what's impressive about being around it versus the artistry Actually, take, of how they wrote. What are you going to take from it? Like you've seen yeah. it bigger on your computer screen. Right, right. But you never got to be in a room with it. And that's, and there yeah. versus, versus these where you get both, you get to be in a room with something that you couldn't be with that is historic. And, but in, and, and with newer cards, a lot of times you get more, but the amount of times I've cast Black Lotus in my life, one of them was with one of the cubes you just mentioned. <laughs> um, and like there's maybe four or five, six other times um, yeah. versus Tassiger where I've like spent an entire weekend just like casting that guy trying to kill my opponents with it for um, real though like but yeah. that that experiential things are are you know when I make art shows I try to have a little of both yeah where sure. if you had a after hours museum high-end donors to the exhibition tired donors to the museum they get to do a beta draft in the alpha room right like mm-hmm. that is a high level experiential thing next to the works Whereas the others would be, I'm going to have the whole Tron deck here, every card art of Tron. And you get to see every single one, blah, 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 blah. Right. And then you get to have a, an experience with each of those. That, those are totally different experiences. But sure. those are the things we get to work on in art shows to plan out how people emotionally connect with these things in real time as they walk through. And, you know, when you get to see it, it's pretty dang special. It's pretty neat. Oh it's, yeah. Well, I mean that like, what you just life. described with Tron sounds for not like in, in San and something that's really only available to you in magic. How many other anythings could you create like out of a random disap- like group of art that you were able to get your hands on a story that people resonate with from that, th- you know, not thousands of artists, I guess exactly, sure. you know, whatever 60 divided by four is <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> well, we can have that piece of like you you could show like a deck progression you could show sure. turn one on the wall and it could be art art turn one yeah, yeah. turn two art art turn three tron bam like Karn, just to yeah. see it in real time you're like i do that and mm-hmm. i get to see that that makes it create the, the unique like artistic experience of like it, 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 the encounter and you can't you can't do that with a computer screen. You can't plot that out. It just does. It feels different, and sure. that's some of the things that, uh, we work in art shows to 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 recreate for people that they get to see, which is I think are kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing uh, to talk about is uh, secret layers, which you've mentioned a little bit as we've kind of talked. Sure. Sure. Um, and I guess I guess the first question, and you know, more more birds eye less art base, is how do you feel about secret layers as a product? What 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 are your what's your because they are a relatively controversial uh, product line. Fair. I'm, I'm 100% net positive. Okay. 100% net positive. I think everything about them is done right. You can nitpick. People can nitpick. They love nitpicking. And magic, Wait, magic players like nit- nitpicking? Is yeah, that a thing we yeah, like doing know, on the right? internet? Like Mr. Peanuts, Salty <laughs> Peanuts. But no, I, I think that because the art of it is, is so varied and so different mm-hmm. that it, I go back to analogy of, of visiting a museum. When you're like in your teens, you're trying to see some things. You want to see the hits. You want to see the important things that you see as important, right? Mm-hmm. Like Chris Ron art. Pretty universally said, this is good. Cool. If you see a Chris Ron dragon, you assume it's better. But as you progress and then you don't go through just to see the Warhols at the museum, you're like, I want to see landscapes and I want to mm-hmm. see good ones. You're in that 19th century art that most people just whip by and it's in like 
furniture around it and things, but it's amazing art. It looks like magic art, mm -hmm. but secret layer gives you that. I'm into pop posters. Now I'm into metal band covers in my life right now as a, a 35 year old, there's a 45 year old and my taste change in what art I like in my home and what art I gravitate to in my life. Secret Layers gives that opportunity to have those people that couldn't have that experience with just the normal imaginative realism, general rough look of what that is, right? Like, right. like, Tyler, like Tyler Jacobson, he looks like magic, right? Like you can see his stuff and you're like, oh yeah, it's a magic card, right? right? Whereas Secret Layers don't fit that model where they futz with design and, and they futz with borders and all these other weird variations that doesn't detract from my art that I want to play where I want to play the Chris Ron dragon, but maybe someone's like, I've had enough of that. I need some flavor. Mm -hmm. And now you've got some weird Waldo looking art and they're like, that's my jam. And I'm like, okay, you do you, I'm going to have to double read it when it comes out. <laughs> but I like that variation that you have. Cause I'm not forced to buy it. I'm not forced to interact with it, but I like the option that I can opt in whenever I want. And it's not like the magic world hasn't had variations of cards, making it hard to tell which exactly like it, the, the textless cryptic hmm. command that existed for my entire history of playing. Magic, Comic -Con but, turns out made cards that were all black. Right. And you can't read them. I love them uh, because I waited That's in cool. line to get them <laughs> when they're I hate cool. them. If I, yeah, they're very cool uh, and they're illegible. <laughs> and so like from that perspective, the like, I agree. I think that, Magic has always been about customization. Like that is the the lifeblood of this game more than maybe any other feature of the game. And these are just giving more tools to players to be able to customize their cards in ways that they think are neat. It's Fallen Empires. I'm sorry. It's Fallen Empires. Not you don't like that high tide? Fine. Don't play that high tide then. Play the different high tide that you'd like. It's fine. That doesn't hurt me none. No right. big deal. Um, all right. So uh and and then I guess like in, in its effect to artists, and we mentioned this a little bit before. It feels like secret layers are a wide cast net benefit to artists, both on the side that like there's the obvious answer where you get the artist series secret layer where one artist does every single yeah. one. And that's great. Yeah. But you also get the reprint equity sale part of it where yeah. it, uh, like the cards that are in secret layers are all good. They're not like a hundred percent that, but it's like ninety five percent are good, and the five percent are not that aren't like good cards are iconic for other reasons, right? And so, right. you by doing a secret layer have a a significant amount more assurances on oh this card is going to be on a popular card that people already resonate with. Um, what are you know a I don't know if you can talk about this, but like uh, how do artists relate to secret layer? Are they trying to get it? Is that like now like the thing they're trying to do? Are they, is it more something they're requested of? What is the relationship to it? Sure. Um, so I'll have to be very careful on how I phrase this. Um, there are more artists, secret layers than you think. Okay. That are uh, being worked on, produced, whatever. Sure. Um, okay. Okay. Like, right? I, like there, there's more like than you secret, think. Secret done. layers. Yeah, 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 there's not secret secret layers that have already been released that no, no, one no, they don't have like a peel off thing though. That would be sweet. That would be, be done, sweet. Done no. no, no, you don't peel off nothing. No, it, it's a thing that uh, artists get invited to do them, right? Sure. Like you have to get invited to do a secret layer, and there's also things that some artists should be given that free reign to play. The best mm -hmm. example I give is Sam White. Sam White makes landscapes for Magic, and he's a cool guy. Cool guy makes great landscapes, right? great environments he also does spooky he actually got into the unpublished category for the spectrum books which is the hardest thing to get into that's like okay. your personal work quality like it's always the hardest thing to win and his stuff in there spooky it's all spooky stuff mm -hmm. like if he did like a halloween spooky secret layer he would murder it sure sure but that people that have like adam paquette where he has his fine art side and he has his magic side and they're separated that's what I want to see. I want to see people that have like their own IP and they're working on it and then they get to show that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or people that are, that do this stuff in their spare time. And then they get a secret layer to re to integrate part of their personal, emotional work. That they do to be part of it. That's what I want to see clearly. I mean, that's great. Otherwise like more dragons or more dragons are fine, but I want to see people 
stretch. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I would love. To it, it, it gives magic the framework to have, you know, there's, there's an entire secret layer of tattoos artwork yeah. <laughs> that like yeah. doesn't like, right. Like you have the ability to stretch what can be on a magic card, which then allows artists to really explore what they're best at. That doesn't have to fall in the framework of, Oh, this has to fit on a plane that Jace could show up on. Right. You, you, if Jace can't be next to this thing, then this doesn't work. And and right. sometimes magic does that. You know, there's there's the library of art that always like is is a little bit past what magic would normally have. But you know, the secret layers are a world where they can just do that on purpose. <laughs> and, and for the artist ones, they get to choose. Sure. Like this, oh. is, this isn't random. Like they do get to make suggestions. Oh, you really? Know, I didn't they're... know that. So, so when an artist does a secret oh. layer as the artist, they're picking which art, which cards they get to play with. Or, and... Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, so it's not I like didn't they're going to say, all. like, make all the mocks, and they'd be like, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they like, they... like, they get to pick which ones, like, okay, I want to do this type of thing, and you know, I want to do landscapes. And they're like, mm -hmm. okay, well, here's a bunch of landscapes. Here are some options they can choose, right? Because there is some price rough relativity that they have to do. Like, let's not right. be here's that. here's my top 10 cards and yeah, the yeah, Wizards yeah. picks yeah. five of them because if you totally. iron it all out, it's fine to sell that in a $40 product that they'll ship 100%. to you. And that's reasonable. And that's yeah. reasonable. And a lot of artists have like played and they're like, I played a, a goblin deck. I'd love to do a goblin. Is there any of them that, uh, you know, that need a reprint? or could use new art to it just because of scarcity or whatever the reason is, right? right so right. that's ways that they can have like a personal, and that card's like $2, but then the secret light becomes the hype version, right? Which is great. Right. Um, but there's some other ones that just don't fit, that you just can't, they're just a little too strong for commander decks. They don't fit in standard products anymore, so that you have like judge judge promo foils mm -hmm. and secret lights. And those then the rarely a master, yeah. rarely a master's product, or rarely one of those things. You know, if it's just high power level, like a sword or something. But other ones like, uh, like tarnished citadel. Like I was just talking about this the other day. Like the land is really good and it's very playable, and it's only been printed once, and it's stupid expensive. That's a perfect card that could fit into a secret layer. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, this could fit in a hundred different places. That'd be really neat, right? Um. That's things that they could bring up. And if an artist knows those things, they can suggest them sure. over the top. And if they don't know, they give some parameters and then they work with them to, yeah. to get well, those and, things in there. And like secret layers are also benefited from the fact that they don't, they don't have the commander product problem where commander products can't have cards over a certain price. Otherwise right, 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 retail right, right, right. no longer functions because the right, way, right. because they're in an assortment and you can't, when they get delivered to a store, it comes with the full assortment and there's no way to order them outside of that assortment. So if you have a true name nemesis or like if they try to really printing Imperial still in a commander deck, that deck will sell out. And then the other five will just sit on the shelf forever. <laughs> right, um, right. And, and so secret layers with judge pro. Yeah. Those are like the two best ways to be like, Oh, I'm printing to demand in some hundred yeah, percent. And, and then and, there is like people on the teams that are pretty aware of that. Some cards need to be reprinted. Like, yeah, you just got to yell at Gavin to reprint repercussion. Like that card should be reprinted. Right. Like, we are going to get a card. foil Felwar stone within the next year and a half because Honestly, I have, I've seen Gavin get yelled at about it every day. <laughs> right, but that's perfect. Like right. that yeah, would yeah, be that's a good. That's why he's there. Layer. Yes. I yes. would get that one. Who wouldn't get that one? Everyone gets that one. But finding yeah. those pieces where it's like, how do you work with an artist on that? Because, you know, I'm privy to things there that sometimes I get asked. They're like, hey, I got one. I got like three good ideas. I got three good ideas locked in. I got two other ideas. Do you know any card that needs to need a reprint or people want new art for it for reasons that we can't get into or won't get into? Uh, but like, you know, it just needs an update for whatever thing. Or it's like a new border and people want an old border, something of the sort. Like I, I, those are the suggestions I love talking with artists to say like City of Brass is super cool and it's played forever. But how could that be made new again? Because none of them, you, you can reprint it. Should it be old border, new border? How does the art look? That could be different. Could you make it contemporary? Like, that is a really interesting secret layer question for the artist series um, or outside artists that, the, that they want to get out there. Um, but no, I'm 100% a fanboy of them. I've got a bunch of them. I love everything about them. Um, none of, no product's perfect. None of this is. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are pretty universally seen uh, by artists and art collectors. These are a good thing. And and that kind of gets to, to the the next question before we get into oh well, there's two two things one is a way of supporting artists has been for 
all of magic history go to a grand prix buy their stuff yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah. get them to sign cards yeah. buy waters prints whatever yeah. now that we're in a world of i live in this box uh it uh you know the 2020 lifestyle uh what are some of the best ways to support artists outside of those those shows retweet them you dumb dumbs you gotta retweet them <laughs> like on, like i'm yeah. not even kidding no one like when they post stuff you love their jam don't like it retweet it don't facebook upvote it don't like it or upvote it like share, share. it. straight up share it like they need to know like it's amazing how lonely we are because of the pandemic. Artists, they've been at home all the time in their studio. Like, it's mm-hmm. double from them. They don't get to go outside and see anybody. So those things, that's number one. Always, always, always. When they ask for a thing, when they're working on a thing, just share their stuff. They're, just do it. From there, you know, check out their artist stores when they have those things. See what they got going on for Valentine's Day. I'm working out some Valentine's Day sales right now. Straight up. Cheaper sketches things of that sort to get a loved one. That's like, I can't buy him another booster box. That's silly. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll get him an art, like things of that sort. And when they pop up, pitch it and, and get a sign card. Oh, heck. And, and, and from that point of view, like the art that they're doing around Valentine's, if, like if you like a magic artist, if you have a card, if you like Tassiger, <laughs> that artist has done other artwork or does other artwork that has nothing to do with magic. And it's not like those don't resonate together. I will look for every Izzy piece I see because he did Kess. And like, obviously I associate with that card. So, you know, there's, there's that world exists for you to be able to kind of help support them or them. Or right. You, but yeah, uh, everyone <laughs> always immediately, you can, you can vote with your pocketbook, but the number one way to do it is just promote the ones that you like, literally actively promote the ones you like. Perfect. All right. Last thing before we get into some Twitter questions, if we have time and I think we are running low on time, so there will be, I'll, I'll pick like one or two Dude, rapid fire, rapid fire. Hero, I'm into it. Heroes of the realms cards. Oh yeah. What are they? And uh I know that you've been working uh to you mean help these? Yes, those. <laughs> oh man, those so, look so for, good. For people, for, for people to see, it's uh, uh it's the artist, it's the employee cards that were given um as 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 awards, they're tokens, you know. They're they're the dundies uh, effectively <laughs> of them and uh Normally, uh, what you're supposed to do is uh, you you get you got to cover the person's name. Right? You cover the person's name because they, they they still work there, and you can't let them know that anybody's had them or whatever else. Um, I have a few here. Um, so I've been working with a uh, uh, Robert Schuster, who's a former Wizards employee, and uh, I also told Robert now at now at uh, he's at Microsoft or not my Bungie, right? He's doing he's, he's at Bungie, yeah, 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 working on Destiny, doing great stuff, um, yeah, he's and great he's guy. like. I told him a while ago, like a couple of years ago about his daughter, Emmy, because I do fundraising, you know, on the side, mm-hmm. what have you, that I'm not with my day job. Uh, I'll do one for you one day. And he's like, yeah, 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 we'll get to it. And, you know, things get busy, whatever. And finally, Robert's like, you sell that art? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And he's like, what if I told you I have unique items? And I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking like sculptures, right? Like I'm thinking like like the Kamigawa sculptures or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. And, you know? And instead he's like, no, 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 no. I have the, the, the employee cards. Could you help me sell those? And I'm like, what? So I had to learn about them to figure mm-hmm. out how rare are these? Do these things, do people really care about these? Right. Are these that hard to find? And yeah, they really are that hard to find. And they really are that expensive. Because the people that, only people that can uh, sell them are ones that left Wizards. You so got of them. the team of like Studio X at R&D, you have to leave the company. Like that's the only way to get them. Like they have to leave the company and then move them, you know, or donate them or whatever. And that just doesn't really happen. Like Ga- Gavin's still kicking it, clearly. Like he's right. got a bunch of them, but he's not going to move them. He works there, right? So you have to find people that are past that life stage and also make it publicly available and also like make it like. Uh, and want to uh, sell the thing that they're nostalgic for from yeah, when they work. Because well, yeah. it's, 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 it's an art. It's a work award. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you frame it. You put it on your wall. So those sort of things make it really, really tough that it's hard for people to be like, well, what's the TCG player price? And you're like, it it doesn't work like that. Like this is like yeah, a fraternal like, 999, not, like 69, 69, 69, 69 is what it is on TCG player. Because. Be <laughs> it, it's like the Richard Garfield cards. Like they made a few of them, you know, for the birth of the child, the wedding and, and the, yeah, wedding, yeah. yeah. Like, but that's, they're more rare than that. So finding people that have them often are secretive. And the ones that do, you know, 
haven't graded him, which CGC, those folks are really the only one. They've really carved out their play of like misprints and, and weird mm-hmm. stuff of that sort. And they were super good about it. They were super nice. Uh, I had to like pick these up from Robert uh, ourselves though, um, because oh. you, you can't ship them. Cause what do you do if it goes missing? What do you yeah, do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's got your name on it. It's, and you don't work there anymore. So you can't get new ones. It's just gone. Yep. 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 So I had to fly to Seattle and pick them up from Robert. Like I flew there for a day. Mm-hmm. It was his son's birthday, right? I had to bring a birthday present. I brought some yeah, Pokemon. Che- got- Why wouldn't I? Sure. Sure. You checked out SeaTac. <laughs> yeah. I checked out SeaTac. Went to his house and we like picked up stuff and he left. But that's the type of thing that, oh, that does happen. That we had mm-hmm. to physically then drop off, physically pick up again, physically drop off, physically pick up again to actually make that happen. And then I have shipping insurance for art reasons. Um, sure. Because, you know, art is also one of kind of stuff. So you need to have real shipping insurance. So I have those things if I do need to ship it to people if they live, you know, not nearby. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the whole experience of having to like educate people of like, what is this thing in, in, in magic of today where you're like, Oh, it's on Scryfall. Everything's on Scryfall. Right. Right. But then you click into it and you're like, wait, I can't buy it. Well, maybe it's on MKM. Maybe it's, maybe it's on the Euro version. And then you're like, well, it's not that either. So what, how are these real cards? Are they oversized? Are they big? Are they what? Cause nobody's touched them. Nobody's yeah, seen yeah, them. Yeah. And even to see them right now in wizards, you need to go into the uh, main floor. And you need to get into, uh, if anybody's ever been there, you take a left into like their, their like uh, uh, waiting room of sorts. It's not on the uh, fourth floor anymore. It's, it's in the main floor. Oh, and then in the right side is where they have like the, uh, uh, like the gaming rooms, you play commander and whatever else, whatever else. And then they're all on the wall. Each one by year is on the wall, but that's not open to the public. Like you have to be invited in and a reason to get a badge to actually see them. So even if you're in Seattle, you don't get to see these things. Right, so right, right. finding people that are like, oh, I need that hype, weird stuff. I'm a number one merfolk collector and I need that merfolk is just this weird community building of like, this person knows this person who knows this kind of Japanese guy that's really mm-hmm. into merfolk that you got to talk to, um, which has been a really fun kind of experience to find these like hyper misprinty collectors that is a different world from art, but yet it feels very analogous because it is a one of one sort of situation that's very similar. It's a similar community and it's, and it's fun to meet, um, like cousins to people you're normally used to. Sure. 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 I I guess my one question is it, I mean, you can, can you share how much some of these have sold, uh, uh, up to this point? Cause I want to, I can't because Robert said, uh, he would be sharing with, um, he's been telling multiple people that he won't share for a year. Okay. Okay, cool. For a full year, he will not give any indicator to any other people. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to stick to that. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, at that point, he can he can make announcements if he wants or whatever. Like, this is how do. much we made um, for this, for, sure, for the charity, sure. XXX, XYZ. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, he's got he's got to build a ramp to his house for his daughter. Like, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's expensive. laughs> um, Awesome. No, they're, they're all really cool. And for people who don't know, you know, you can look, you can look these up They're They're often also like, uh, I think one of them that was really popular is, uh, this one can make any other card into a partner commander when you play with it. And yeah. they're, you know, yeah. so they're, they're all like, um, uncardy with themes, uh, in the sense yeah. that they like, they like yeah. play outside of the rules of magic. So they're not like cards you could like, they're all built to be cards that you really couldn't play in a game of magic, kind of like the holiday cards that they send out every year as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're really cool. Um, okay. Now we're at the rapid, we're at the, we're going to, I'm going to ask some Twitter questions. We're going to, we're going to get questions from the internet. Now, some of the questions we did ask already, uh, uh, at, uh, Bibliovore orc, orcish librarian provided, uh, some of the questions as did, uh, uh, proxy guy who, who, uh, provided some of the secret layer stuff we talked about already, but they were like sure. things I wanted to talk about versus, uh, random one-off thing. So the first one, this is from okay. Sam at Ristic Studies. Uh, a recurring rhetorical question you ask in your analysis is how much reality do you want in your fantasy art? And Sam is wondering uh, how much do you want in your fantasy art? He's asking this. He's he's putting a big old Uno reverse card on you. Um, that's uh, Magic Man Sam. <laughs> I'd, I'd assume there there is only one Magic Man Sam. Um, you know, it, well, what I what I'd say is that you know my reality is is pretty comfortable, right? Like married, we we own, we own a home and we're millennials. Like we're doing okay. And my idea is, I think, to you know the wild west of cowboys that 
there were a lot of black cowboys. This idea that it was John Wayne, white guy's big hat is not really the reality. Sure. But we created the reality of what it looks like of from movies, you know, as a Los Angeles person, you'd pick this up. And it, it, instead, I want to show um, my fantasy is that it's not like 15th century Europe, white privileged knights. Instead, there are black soldiers with white soldiers. There are knights that are women, um, you know, because the Middle Ages, of, of course, just weren't that progressive, obviously, for reasons. So I look at my fantasy in that well, and sort and, of terms. and arguably they were more progressive than their depictions have been for the last hundred years of and fantasy Alstrom. literature, right? Like because there was Alstrom. Middle Ages Europe was not a monolith of whatever. There no, was people from all means. of the yeah, but yes, continue. Like so, finding those pieces, like, like I don't want to, I don't need to have you know specifics because I do like how the planes change and shift and 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 visually uh, alter in that piece of whether it's too much technology, not enough technology, and in, everywhere in between. Um, it, to 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 have that example is like I this battle wheelchair being a major character and not just a one off goblin planeswalker. None of this is real anyway. So let's just make the coolest thing possible and try to have as many different options of our own reality depicted there in different planes we visit. And hopefully we cover enough things that aren't just carbon copies of our, our current contemporary life, right? Like I, that I also detest mm -hmm. of let's just take this culture and just copy paste. It's in magic now. Like very much that British boarding school into like the wizarding world. Like I get it, but it's like, Yep, that already exists. I already know that. Like, I want to see something I haven't seen and things I haven't known yet. And visually, I, I want to see those pieces. And Magic's able to do that very simply of just asking for it rather than assuming people will naturally do it. Mm -hmm. Next question. This is from Nathan Weber at Nathan J. Weber. Thoughts on favorite artists artwork from Alpha and Y, ignoring which are most prolific. So <laughs> you don't you don't fair yeah what, what's your favorite what is your favorite alpha beta artwork that has nothing to do with like the fact that this was the most tournament played card of all time <laughs> it, 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 sure um y you know it's products of its time so you have to take it in context there um i i do think there's 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 things there that endured really well that hold up really well i think a lot of mark to dean's early work um really stands out as unique and, and and fresh at the time but continues uh to look fresh um i think a great example is some of his like how he does piping um and and i say piping that um like how it like winds around whether it's like rib cages or like how mana vault like looks and feels um those sort of things i, I found to be that is very magic that was inspired by uh geiger you know who made alien and, and did all of this mm -hmm. early work that i saw this through line of this isn't random fantasy this is as precedent it fits into the overall narrative of um illustration imaginative realism and he was one artist that referenced pieces that then continued on and he made future works that that were also of that vein um so yeah i would probably say some of mark Tudin's work well, and, and like, there's an argument that his artwork, because Alpha came out in a world where story didn't exist. All the flavor text was made up. No, they like no, threw a bunch no. of stuff against the wall. And it was meant to be more of a hark back to like D&D &D books and just like whatever yeah, generic fantasy tropes you could come up with. And but the Mark to Dean work definitely is like what influenced and created the entire yeah. vibe of Frixia, <laughs> right? Like that, that look is something and, and him pulling from alien is also, you know, what, what take those references and, and that grew out of those, as you said earlier, four by six, uh, little pieces of, of, of artwork. Right. And you can see some of that in like the chaos orb head, which he, he worked into like, uh, um, uh, Lord Magnus, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the continuation of it. And he returned to that in like Delph's cone in how the piece is in to Delph's cube to even the abomination. Like these things are continued in that, that he showed them very early and then would given time when given room to really expand. He, he then elaborated on those pieces to, to, to make it feel magic instead of a, um, 
some of the uh, alliances works he made wooden sphere and then that idea of what the wooden sphere like texturing looked like became Mark to Dean. and then that became a staple of what magic looked like to help uh the early visual designs and then he obviously he worked in house um really nailing down what Frexian was which he uh and Chippy and Dave Alsop uh, made the Frexian go- god book which they made like it was a like concept mm-hmm. book where it was just Phyrexian ideas and it was a book um it's never been released it's never been made public but they, they made this thing mm-hmm. and it was just idea 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 of how the Phyrexians did creatures and how they impacted different ways and the eyes and how they they look um so you could see him early on trying to find some of those angles um yeah the old do you know why that hasn't been released in any way like published in any form or I, just <laughs> i do know okay. i do know uh one went missing um well, one grew legs is I think is the term okay. growing growing yeah, legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, just es- escaped. Um, and, it, there was a it was a you yeah, know yeah, yeah, they were behind bars. And, <laughs> you know, nothing of the sort. But it escaped. And the, and the third an artist still has it. So okay. uh, there hasn't really been, you know, that sort of like archival thing. They don't have an archivist there like uh, um, Blizzard does. Blizzard has like a person that collects. They're and saves. literally like a librarian. Sure. Well, they're an archivist on this. They're like, hey, cosplayer, we want that thing. And they're like, what? They're like, yeah, it's going to be accessioned into our permanent collection. And they're like, okay. Oh, <laughs> like things yeah. of that sort. Like magic doesn't have that person sure. yet. They're called the black library people in Warhammer. Uh, magic will have that person. That person will exist in time. It's just, you know, going to be a little while. Yet. Sure, sure, sure. But once that happens, they would go through archival materials like this because they're concept art, not final published art. Sure. So it's not always like, perfected or smooth and ready to be seen by the right 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 it's it's from an era that like like i would buy that book that's a book like i have not bought a lot of the magic art books more just because they're not art books and i have a library of shelf space that is already taken up by trotsky's that i own we already talked in the pre-show we talked about how little room i have on my walls bookshelves are more 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 hard to get onto (laughs) um but that would be one that like, cause that, that is a history to it. That is also something that's mm-hmm. like influenced so much that that would be, that is sad. That is not, that is not out there. Uh, if I'm working, I'm working on it. Yeah, we'll, if, we'll, we'll, let's check back in a few years. If, if the, if the book that has legs is a podcast fan, <laughs> let, let, let's, let's get that on somewhere. Um, next then. And I believe this is the, the final question and this will be from uh, kyle at mr kai guy which dog card is your favorite and which piece of dog art in the game is your favorite can also include hounds i would also say you could include wolves if you would like (laughs) no i'm not gonna do that um probably one that i got a i got to preview a dog um and i got a cut up piece of a oversized card uh and that's the dog snail engine that's my favorite dog card i have it i have the the piece of it when they cut them up um, I just thought that was fun because it's just so ridiculous. Um, I just love love that little nugget. It sits in my uh, office. Um, piece of dog art would be Day of Destiny. You got to look that one up. I'm, I'm looking both of these. Dog, dog, snail yeah, engine? Dog, dog, snail engine. Everybody's going to know about dog, snail engine. That's on card all day. Um, that's the easy one. Like, the Day of Destiny because of the foreshadow. Because of the plant. So this no, is it's an easy card. Whatever. Day your your of legendaries death. get... You know, legendaries get a pump. Who gives a who, who, who cares? Sure. Well, they put a dog in there. Oh, I that see. That means it. legendary dogs are going to get plus two, plus two. Give me those legendary dogs. Where are they at? Well, we Turns have, out we have one, right? A hound. Of- we got a couple of them now. Yeah. We got Isamaru the good boy, uh, and then we got a couple more. But uh, it, it's just it was a nice thing to see that okay, there's going to be a dog legendary, and obviously Isamaru was there right at the time. But you know. Now that you could build decks on it, if you ever include a caller, like you got put that in for your dog, right. then you know your dog is pumped. That and it's really good artwork. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Super cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Um. So, so those are all the things I have in my outline. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we kind of do the wrap up? I guess you mentioned there is tea that there is there is uh, internet artist community tea that you would. Oh, make, there's always tea. There's, there's always tea. Always tea. Uh, there's always would you tea. like to spill any tea? Yeah, honestly, the big thing is that Wizards is already aware of it. And and that's um, because our market is so um, successful, why it's doing so visibly and artists are doing really well. Um, clearly, th- there's it's hard to prove that something is what it is, mm-hmm. right? Because you don't get to see when they perfectly turned it in. 
you don't get to know this was the final painting or this was the final sketch. Like you, you don't know that. There's ways that we can verify, sure. But there's other pieces that it's hard to tell if this is a sketch you did during that time or you waited a month later or two months or six months or whatever and then you did it. Or you find out the card is good and then you just find some. Mm -hmm. Oh, these were in my studio. And that's a really big issue that we're dealing with right now of how do you show provenance? And that's the term provenance of that. The thing is actually what you say it is Mm -hmm. Um, because it's so hard to verify those things. And there are ways to do that. It's just they're cumbersome. But that's a thing that uh, even um, Wizards Art directors have talked to their artists about to say like... If the quality isn't quite there, please don't submit that, right? Like, we don't want to have to give you 30 revisions on something that you're not quite ready for. Like, you haven't picked up acrylic paints in 15 years. You know, maybe don't do a magic art. Maybe do some personal work to, you know, get your skills under you again. And then, you know, submit one of them to us. Let us know about it. Don't just turn one of those in and expect that to be cool. Mm -hmm. Um, So And, and, And the idea there being that they would, like, send that in then it's officially within the system and then then they do the art digitally and they get away with the digital art. But now there is a physical piece of the artwork that they can sell directly. Correct. Okay, got so it. that piece of how do you, 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 you know, you got to trust artists, you have to trust the process of things, but there's tells and especially people that really do notice and really understand how a marking would be done or a sketch would be cleaned up or a line finished mm-hmm. or, you know, you probably wouldn't do this at sketch stage. Like this is clearly finished in the final and you went back to it. Those are the things that it's going to change for us for the next like 15 years mm-hmm. where, you know, there's going to be a better process to say like the signature is real or not real because artists, you know, they don't live forever. Let's be real. Sure. And people like signed cards. That's a thing we're going to have to come to terms with. And same thing with their art to say like, did they actually make this piece? Or, oh, they had all these, they were a digital person this whole time. Oh, they had all these pencil sketches they didn't tell anybody about. Uh, How do we prove that? Those sort of issues we're already dealing with in real time. And how do we, as a community, like accept those things, talk about those things with, you know, being respectful, not calling people out, but also like making it clear that, you know, a a money grab of sort is just not acceptable Mm -hmm. because it's just not real. Like that isn't what it is. Like, you can clearly look at the lines and say that's not the thing. Um, but the incentive to do so is so high right now that I can understand. Right. I don't like it, but I can understand. Well, there, there, yeah, I mean, the as you mentioned before, there's a reason financially. Like It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to make a quick buck. It's like, oh, no, I need this money. And there's, these are ways for me to Gotta be eat. able to accomplish that goal, which is everyone's goal. And being an artist is hard enough. And... Yeah, how do you how do you structureize that in a way that also then people could trust? I mean, there is, and to some extent, like I, I guess when there's an honesty about it, like I would I would pay Izzy to repaint Kess if he was like, oh yeah, I could sketch that out for you. I would just do that. <laughs> I don't need it to have happened before the card existed. I don't know, sure. right? Like that that's not a, and that's what happened a lot at shows, right? You would ask for people to sketch on your cards or whatever, yeah. and yeah. that would be a grander yeah. version of that piece. But yeah. um, like there is there is there's the honesty side of it. I think that is, and, and the value of that is different, right? There's the, the value of something that happened before this existed and within the timeline and behind it versus, you know, this is a sketch by the same artist of the thing that he did. Like, you know, time, time matters. (laughs) No, it it does. No, no, but that, that piece of like this commander came out and we found out it was good after the fact. Can I get a unique print a one of one can you paint over like a, a piece can you you paint the face and then i'll frame like a five by seven face of it whatever right like those things are totally that's not what we're talking yeah, about. yeah 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 but those things are also accepted and encouraged right so, um, so that's really the only thing i would want to uh, like talk about and i could talk about that forever but you know some of is there is there a specific tier around that or just just that that is a thing for the world to be wary of and the world knows it's the a world big to be very aware okay. of and and things like ebay you got to be very on the lookout for those sort of mm-hmm. things. But there's people like us that are, you just ask, hey, can you take a look at this? Yes, I will. Happily. Especially if you come friendly, of course I'll help out. Sure. And you can, and and as a wrap up, uh, where can people find you on the internet? 
And and oh, thank sure. you so uh, much for joining. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you, you can you can find me on you know the MTGR market on Facebook. I'm very easy to find there. Um, otherwise on Twitter uh, for, at Fourthos Mike, and literally you can type in MTG Art Mike space space, and I will show up every single time. Uh, and you know talk art and share your favorite works, and we get to compare notes of what's your favorite dragon or what have you. Um, I love talking about art because it brings joy, and I love. I love sharing that with you. And, and I can I can attest that if like if someone was like, Alex, I need you to put down your like top 25 must follows in the magic community on Twitter, you would be high on that list or on that list. Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. Well, thank you. A, beyond the fact that great guy, fun to interact with on the Internet, never, never harassing anyone <laughs> uh, or yelling at them. Uh, the 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 pot like, you know, you are the expert on this subject matter. This is this is a world that coming to you, you know, from a knowledge perspective, same way that, you know, Mark Rosewater and Gavin are also on those lists. And and yeah. and I mean, if all the art directors were on Twitter, that'd be great. But they're not right. <laughs> they're busy. They're busy. It is what it is. And so, no, I appreciate that. And and, and I do encourage people to reach out. I, I, I love talking about art and comparing notes on things. Absolutely. And, and thank you so much for going on for, for everyone uh, listening. Thank you so much. Uh, normal shout outs. We do this every, every Tuesday. If this is your first time listening, please subscribe, hit that subscribe and like button. Um, oh, I guess we didn't, well, we'll figure that out later. Uh, we, I've like slowed down on trivia. Let me know. The trivia question for today is let me know if you missed trivia. Cause I've forgot it for the last three episodes uh, and comment below with uh, trivia. What, what you would want, if you want that to come back as a feature. Um, and, uh, and then I'll know if you listened past the goodbye part of the episode uh <laughs> also make sure to check out the patreon as we said we also do we're now doing modern streams every sunday at 2 p.m on uh my twitch at cast wiley uh, with ben ben's hosting those and then i'm hosting our commander streams every monday night uh and i will be back next monday i had to take two weeks off um playing some commander uh there is somewhere a vod i think on this youtube of borthos mike and Ristic study sam playing commander on that stream that exists uh and i played uh the reaper king and there's a lot of conversations about pumpkin art if you want to hear that that is there as well uh and uh once again mike thank you so much for joining thanks guys happy to be here anytime all right, thanks everyone we'll talk to you all uh next week this has been a production of time traveler media sending podcasts into the future